Hi everyone, welcome to History on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. We are continuing our discussion related to the Yoruba. We are going to be looking at some ancestral dynamics related to the Yoruba, and we're going to do some transliterations. And so you're going to see how the name Yoruba is manifested in a variety of languages. One of the other things that you're going to make note of is the fact that the Yoruba are a very ancient people. And up until this point, they have been living in uh, some degree of obscurity, meaning the identity has been obscured. And so we're going to be looking at some of these transliterations in a very ancient transliteration of this name that is going to then give us a better idea of where the people came from and where this name came from. We're going to start off with a little collage just as a reminder for people that individuals in antiquity living in specific geopolitical spaces may not look like the people that are occupying those spaces today. And so that's a big part of what creates confusion in history. It has been these migrations and deportations and removals and conquerings and things of that nature. And so we're just going to give a little reminder about what many of the ancient Europeans looked like prior to today. We're going to first look at the house of transliteration of Yoruba. And as you can see off to the right hand side, there is a difference in spelling with the house of spelling it Y A R B A W A. And then we have a Portuguese transliteration where it is spelled and pronounced Iruba. This name, this ethnicity is apparently known around the world because you have these transliterations in a variety of languages across continents. And so here you see the Irish transliteration. And this is very important because this word and this name is important in the Irish because it constitutes a number of dynamics. And you can see there are sorts of grammar rules associated with this name. And so you have Yoruba as a noun, and then you have Yoruba as an adjective, and the Irish are very specific about this. And this also might suggest that the Yoruba have a particular relationship with the Irish. We're going to be looking at a very interesting transliteration coming out of the Tamil language. Tamil is a very ancient classical language of India, and it's from the Dravidian language group in terms of that uh, language family. And so we're going to be looking at that. What's really interesting about this is that this is a very ancient language and they have their own understanding of the name Yoruba and you're going to see the difference in terms of spelling and you're going to see the difference in terms of the way Yoruba is pronounced. You're also going to see a dynamic that's related to that Beticism dynamic that we talked about where letters are interchangeable like the B and the V and the B and the P and that is a dynamic that goes on with the Tamil language with respect to the Yoruba. And here you can see just how ancient Tamil is. It goes way back into the BC period. And here we have this interesting transliteration coming out of the Tamil. And with the Tamil way of pronouncing Yoruba, you have Yorupa. And this of course is interesting for the obvious reason, Yorupa or Europa is the name that serves as the foundation of the continent known as Europe. And here you have some other transliterations and you can see in the Pashto that there's also that Uroi sound when transliterating Yoruba. Well. 
Now let's check out some of these Europa, Yoruba origins. As you can see, Europe comes from the Latin Europa. And there is a claim that there is an uncertain origin. However, you can see down below that this name is tied to none other than a Phoenician princess in Greek mythology. And you can also see an indication of a possible Semitic origin. And we're going to look at that a little bit more. You can also see where there is a part of the transliteration related to Phoenician and indicating hence West. Not only is Yoruba associated with Europa, you also have Yoruba being associated with the name of two Israelite kings and you have Jeroboam or Yeroboam and you can see with the Yeroboam when you see the Y in place of the J you can more readily see the Yoruba and this name comes again from a Semitic origin and the name means the people increase. And according to a number of narratives, there is an association between Jeroboam and Europa also. And so all of these names are intertwined, sort of meeting together, ending up with this name Europe. And here you can see additional transliteration information and forms of that name. And again, the name is rooted in this idea of people will contend. You can look down at the bottom and you can see Yoruba or Yoruba inside of these forms and transliterations. And part of the difficulty with understanding the origins of Yoruba, those roots, the difficulty comes from often attributing some of these names and these cultural dynamics and these ancestral lines to Canaanite heritage. And again, this may be related to attributions related to the mother in place of the father. And so there may be a matrilineal focus when discussing these things. However, when you look at this name, this is definitely not a quote unquote Canaanite name. And this is definitely a Semitic name and not only a Semitic name, but a, uh, we could call it a Jacobite name or we could call it a, an Israelite name. And here you see additional components of that name, also meaning to strive or to contend uh, related to quarreling. And here are some additional transliterations and you can see down below with the Mongolian, you see the E inserted there and you also see that P in place of the B. Now these are some interesting draft registration cards and you can see here the name Europa uh, being carried by a number of people. What's interesting about this is that the individuals tend to come from the Philippines. And here you see another individual with the name Europa again from the Philippines. And here you see an additional Europa again coming from the Philippine Islands. These are very old records, so this is from 1906. And another record, this one's coming from 1910, and this is again another Europa, and again from the Philippines. As we wrap this up, we have looked at a number of transliterations related to the Yoruba name, the Yoruba people. And these transliterations have been important because many of them are ancient. And you can see from these ancient transliterations that Yoruba is tied to a little bit more than uh, has been previously understood. And so the understanding is, is that Yoruba, the Yoruba people have roots that are in Europe and also these Semitic roots that have been largely ignored. Uh, this also shed some light on the relationship between the Yoruba, Nigeria, West Africa, and many European countries and sort of that migration back and forth that tends to go on. It also um, sheds a little bit of light, a little bit more light on what took place related to the transatlantic slave trade and also with respect to what happened to that kingdom of Judah that was situated uh, right there on that coast. And so this is one of those truth commission dynamics, something that needs to be explored a little bit more. 
um, because you have a genocide, a removal, an ethnic cleansing that at this point starts to look very, very personal and like a long held grudge uh, down through centuries. And this seems to trace back to uh, relationships, father son relationships going back even to Abraham. And unfortunately, many historical narratives have been rooted in dynamics related to phenotype. And so it has created a process wherein individuals have made connections or they think they see and have connections with individuals based upon skin color. And those connections may not be in actuality what many people think they are. And what you see here is a dynamic wherein you have individuals with one phenotype perhaps being more closely aligned and connected in terms of ancestry with individuals who may uh, have another phenotype. So we're talking about the Yoruba in Africa and many of the people who are in Europe today. This information is also very pertinent to uh, those who might be descended from those individuals from that kingdom of Judah on the west coast of Africa who were deported into the Americas. And so this is definitely something to look into a little bit more. And also for those individuals who were deported out of Europe into the Americas based upon the Jacobite fights. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.